Hello, welcome back to Dr. How. Today we're going to be talking about lens flares. The Deadly Assassin was a story where Tom Baker's doctor actually went back to Gallifrey. And this is the first time we really saw much of the inside of Gallifrey, and certainly in colour. Now unfortunately we don't actually see at the beginning of this story the outside of Gallifrey's citadels. We actually only see the TARDIS arrive on the inside of a corridor and we don't really get a establishing shot of Gallifrey itself. So what I wanted to do was to make a shot of Gallifrey showing what it looks like from the outside. I wanted to see Citadel in, in a dome. I wanted to see maybe mountains or something. However, we never got that shot in the original. And although there are some flashback scenes uh, in, the, in the modern show, we could just retask those shots, but that would be reusing something, and I didn't want to do that. So uh, if you go and look on DeviantArt, you'll find there's some great paintings of Gallifrey. And there's one in particular that I found particularly nice. So what I wanted to do was to retask that painting to act as a establishing shot for what Gallifrey looks like. So in order to do that, what we can do is actually just select out a region which is the correct aspect ratio, which is 4 to 3 for the old PAL television signal, and we can actually just pan across that painting. However, if you do that, you find that it, it looks a little bit flat. What I've done here is I've gone across the image, I've panned across the image at a constant speed, and you can see that that just looks mechanical and wrong. What we really need to do is accelerate up to a certain speed and then decelerate at the end. So the shot's only four seconds long, so I'm accelerating for one second and then panning across for two seconds and then decelerating for one second at the end. And you can see that that looks a little bit more natural. But even that is lacking. What we really need to do is establish a sense of three-dimensionality. So what I'm going to do is add a lens flare effect. I didn't know anything about lens flares, so I went to the, the masters of lens flares. I went and had a look at Babylon 5. And if you have a look at some of these space scenes, you can see that the, the lens flare does several things. It gives you a reference point. It tells you where the, the light source is in the scene. So even though you've got a, a three-dimensional space battle, you can still have some sense of the space in which this is happening. So it gives you a reference point. Um, it also creates a sort of sense of uh, verisimilitude. You actually feel like there's some cameras operating in that space uh, viewing this scene. So it it helps to establish the reality of the scene. One of the other things that you can see when you look at this scene is there's a light source, which is the source of these lens flares, and there's also some circles, these coloured circles, which are meant to represent the reflections occurring within the glass of the, the lens itself. And you can actually see some stationary points here which exist even though the camera's moving around. Uh, they don't tend to move. So uh, I'm wanting to replicate that, that kind of effect. So what I've done is I've gone into GIMP and just created a whole bunch of uh, lens flare circles. And these are essentially just mostly transparent circles which are coloured. And uh, I've got a whole variety of those in different sizes. I think generally what you want to do is have smaller circles near the middle of the scene that you're viewing so that you don't obscure what it is that you're looking at in the scene. And you can have larger circles towards the edges. Now one of the things that I've done is I've come up with a little bit of a theory on how this thing works. If you imagine the light source is the source of these lens flares, we're going to call that the origin, we're going to call that the point 0.0. .0. The middle of the scene is the point 0.5. If you imagine a, a, an imaginary line going from the light source through the center of the image and down into the opposite corner, that imaginary line runs from 0.0, .0 through 0 0.5 down to 1.0, which is the end point of that imaginary line. Now, what I'm going to do is, as we pan across, you can imagine that 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 imaginary line is stretching. So it's now at a different angle and it's it's been stretched a bit. We're still calling 0.0, .0 the point uh, at the center of the light source, which is the sun up here. 0 0.5 is still the very center of the image. 
and 1.0 is the opposite corner of that imaginary line. As we pan across, that imaginary line stretches further and further, and even though the light source is now off the edge of the screen, we can still imagine that point out there is the point 0.0.0. .0. So what we're going to do is that along that imaginary line, we are going to hang these transparent or semi-transparent circles that I've previously created in GIMP. So as that imaginary line stretches, you can imagine that the 0, 0.0 location is off the edge now, but the line still stretches across the painting and we're selecting out a, a region out of the middle there. We're going to use that imaginary line and we're going to actually hang those circles that I've previously created in GIMP off that line and they're going to be in fixed positions as a proportion of the length of that line so for example we can put a point at uh, one of those line one of those circles we can put at the point uh, 0 0.5 so it will always appear in the middle of the screen but we can put another circle at the point uh, 0 0.2 for example. So it will always be 20% of the way along that imaginary line. Even as it stretches, that circle will stay the same size, but it will be moved so that it is 20% along the distance of that line. And you can see that that produces a nice kind of lens flare effect. And I've, I've written a little program to do that for me to generate these Im images. And you can see that uh, we've got the acceleration and the deceleration effect, and we've also got the lens flare effect, which gives us a nice three-dimensional result. So there you go. That's all I've learned so far about lens flares. I'm Dr. Howe. See you next time. Bye.